Angelo, how do right-wing media outlets portray crime in America? And then how does that coverage play into the narrative from folks like the NRA that more guns are needed to protect Americans from this so-called crime? So one of the things that's happened, especially recently, is sort of this alignment of two theories. So one is you know, the very traditional sort of, you know, that people of color are committing crimes and that they're actually gone, incre that it's increasing over, over, over the last few years, ever since COVID, that somehow they feel like they've had a license to commit these crimes ever since the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, if you go back and look at the coverage in six month blocks, for example, we looked at a six month period a couple, a couple years ago, which showed that they attacked Black Lives Matter specifically, um, the movement itself as ex violent extremists, 440 individual instances on Fox News alone. And so they've been pushing this idea that there's a bloodthirstiness amongst people of color. And then the flip side of that, and this is where it aligns with another conspiracy theory, is that this is all part of Democrats' liberal media's plan for a great replacement, that actually they're enabling and incentivizing people of color to commit these crimes because they're trying to wipe out white people, weaken them, neutralize them, so that they can actually fully take the reins of power in a permanent way. And that's why those two things are scary, because they hype up the crime coverage, they oversaturate it, overrepresent it, and then they explain it by saying, well, this is all part of a grand plan to actually take power away from you. And that's where that third factor ties in, because the NRA and sort of the gun lobby offers the solution, which is that no one's going to protect you. This is why Democrats are attacking police officers, because they're trying to weaken police departments. Police departments are being weakened. The only way for you to protect yourself from Democrats using people of color to, to basically kill you, to wipe you out, is that you need to arm yourself and defend yourself. And that's the sort of state. That is the lens through which a, a consumer of right-wing media sees the world today. Right, and they may not necessarily see them as three separate threads that are being tied together, but is the latent element of everything that they're consuming. Andy, I want you to take a listen to how Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy framed America's rise in gun violence on the Senate floor this week. Take a listen. We are becoming a heavily armed nation, so fearful and angry and hair-trigger anxious that gun murders are now just the way in which we work out our frustrations. This is a dystopia. And I'm here to tell you that it's a dystopia that we've chosen for ourselves. A dystopia that we have chosen for ourselves. You know, I, you both saw the stories this week, Americans shot for, for simply making a mistake. Talk about how these right-wing distortions of reality, which Angela laid out in full, both on television and on the internet, how they then leap into real life and how they become further amplified by people in positions of power like Republican members of Congress. The leap from the media like Fox or even more extreme conservative media, conservative radio, these online spaces that are extremely radicalized. The leap from that to the violence that we saw, say, this week at the front door or in the front seat of a car, these, you know, m mistakes, honest human mistakes that end at the barrel of a gun. I mean, the, the, the leap there, the connection is not that far at all, because, again, as Angela put it so well, this is a sort of reinforcing dynamic here where Millions of people are sitting and watching or listening to this extreme media all day long that pits them against these, you know, faceless, monstrous opponents, enemies, people who are subhuman. And then at the same time, it tells them that you need to defend yourself and no one is coming to do that for you. That is why there are 393 million guns in the country, in this country right now, and the next, you know, largest gun owning country is uh, India, where there's 71 million guns. I mean, for a po population of more than a billion people. I mean, we are just so far ahead of any other nation on this planet. And we believe that we have to fortify ourselves, or at least a decent segment of people do. And it's, you see it both in these incidents this week, but you also see it on January 6th and all of the sort of quasi-paramilitary yeah. militia violence as well. Proud Boy members, three percenters, people who think that they are not safe without an arsenal in their possession, and in some cases are so motivated by what they see online, by what they see on television, what they hear on radio, that they will take up arms 
physically and march on the Capitol, or they will engage in violence against their own fellow Americans because they have become so trapped in this closed loop of, of paranoid and conspiracy-driven information. 